Okay, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to deal with cross origin issues when we're trying to access some of our endpoints from Ajax or some other uh, some other domain besides what you're on. Now, I've created a very simple Spring Boot application, and I will make this available via GitHub. And if we look at it, the simple thing we have here is we are using the Spring Boot Starter Jersey so we can actually get access to some endpoints through REST. Now, I've also set up one simple REST endpoint. Now, all this REST endpoint does is it maps to slash API, and it is a GET request, and it returns just hello world. Right? We're not mixing it with anything else. And we've I've started the application, and let's let's go look at this real quick. Okay, let's look at how we're going to start this. Now, I'm using the REST client, which is a plugin for Chrome. Uh, you can use one of many different plugins, and all we're really trying to do here, let me show you this. I'm trying to make a GET request to localhost 8080 slash API. That's what I've mapped this to. So if I hit send, and you notice what it said it sent, or was going to return, really was just the body of hello world. No, no JSON, nothing else. Or, or in fact, you know, we could. We could actually, just to make it a little bit more, um, more noticeable, right? There. Uh, it's not going to be JSON, but at least we see that it's going to be a string. I'm not going to reset it yet. But essentially, we're just returning something. Now, now what happens if you want to access this from some other location besides where, where you're coming from, which is localhost 8080. So let's make an assumption here, right? Let's actually show, let's say that we actually have another page, an Ajax page. Let's call it still, even if it's localhost, let's say it's from another port like uh, 9999 is, and we'll just say it's uh, index.html. Now, this is where the problem comes. So there are some rules here where if I'm accessing from this origin, now this is a different port, which means it's a different origin, and I'm trying to access 8080 slash API, the localhost 8080, again, is a different origin and where I want to pull information from. So we have an issue with this where security comes into play where we cannot actually access that information from a different origin. Now, let me show you a page. There's also a page I've decided to create, and it's a very simple Ajax page. And let's go through this and look at this. Uh, piece by piece, we'll go through individual pieces here, right? So all I'm doing is I'm implementing or uh, importing jQuery. Now, I want to have jQuery uh, available because I'd like to make some jQuery Ajax calls to my endpoint that I just created, okay? Now, for the next piece, we're actually going to create a custom script inside this page. I'm going to do two things here, right? Now, I want to create a script, and I'm going to say, when this document is ready, meaning when it got loaded, I'd like to execute this function, and this function is going to be a .ajax call. What I would like to do is I would like to make a request to the URL, HTTP localhost 8080 slash API. Now, this is just going to be a GET request, and... Yes, I've even put in here cross domain and cross origin to true, but this is technically on the client side, right? I'm going to show you what kind of problem we're going to have here in a minute with this. And the next bit here is we are just going to catch for errors. If we get an error, there's an error case where we're going to get our, um, our, our uh, 
Ajax call itself, the status, and any error that was thrown. So we're going to start looking at our asynchronous Ajax request if it was in an error state. And we're going to log this to a console. Now, if it did not throw an exception, then what we'd like to do is come down here. I want the data. I want to execute a function with data, status, again, and my uh, XML asynchronous request here. Now, I'm not going to throw an alert because it's kind of obnoxious, but you could if you were trying to do some testing of this. Now, the log, we're going to log out, again, the XRH, the status, and data, just so we see it, but that's not what's important. What we're trying to do is we're trying to append to a class message inside of our HTML, whatever data we get back. Now, by doing that, scroll down here, we have a very simple set of HTML that we're describing here. All we're doing is we're saying we've got a header, I've got a div tag, and my paragraph tag is my class message. So what I'm doing is I'd like to append to this message. Right now, it's going to show application message returned and, well, nothing until we get this response back. So uh, we're not trying to do a lot of magical things with, with Ajax at this point, but we're just trying to get access to a, uh, you know, our API endpoints. Now, <clears throat> just for good measure, I'm starting up my Spring Boot application, and I want to do a couple things. Now, first of all, let's, let's actually go back here and let's look. Now... One thing, actually, I'll go back to this to note. Notice that uh, technically I'm serving this index page, which is this Ajax page, from my Spring Boot application. Okay, because I need to make a point about this. So if I hit submit, of course, this is, this is where our API comes from. That works fine. We know that works. Now, however, I'm going to come back up to here, and I'll close this real quick because I'm going to show you something. Okay. Now, before I hit and I go to localhost 8080, on Chrome, I want to show you a nice little thing. If you do on Mac, you do command option I, you actually get this nice little developer tools that you can actually look at a console and actually get some information about the page as it's loading. Thus, let's actually try to reload this page. Now, by reloading it, Hey, notice, I actually was able to get access to this. And, and actually, if you notice, remember I made this change, it actually, it actually worked. Well, wait a second. I, I thought I was going to try to show you an example where this didn't work. Well, I, yeah, but I want to point out here that because I've served this file technically from the same origin as where I'm trying to call... I don't have a cross-origin issue. I happen to be in the same server as where I'm calling, which is legal. Okay, now let's actually try something different. Now, the easy way to do this is even if you're in Eclipse or IntelliJ, if you notice here in the upper right-hand corner, it usually asks you if you want to open one of these pages in a default browser. Now, this is not going to open it as within the same localhost 8080 application. And I'll show you. Let's open this real quick. I'm going to click this. And the first thing to note, all of a sudden I get an error message because it says localhost 63342. I was in 8080 a minute ago, and I'm not. So I'm in a different origin and hitting OK shows nothing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open up the developer console again, and let's see what actually uh, occurred here. What is the actual problem that we're finding? Now, I'm going to actually highlight this here for us, right? And if we look at the problem, the problem technically is just this. We have this XML HTTP request cannot load from localhost 8080 slash API because there is no access control allow origin header present, which means no other origin besides 8080 is allowed to make requests to this 
actual page, at least from a standpoint of doing Ajax calls. Okay, so we have a problem where we need to add specific cross origin headers for our response inside of our Spring Boot application. And let's work on that. So let's see what we need to do that next piece. So to start adding this support, what we need, as you can see, we're adding a special filter here. And this filter is a cross origin resource sharing, which is what cores is. Now we're going to create this course filter and because we're just using this in spring we're going to extend the generic filter bean and of course it does implement the servlet filter now let's look at a couple things we're doing here uh, line by line what we're going to do is we're just going to have one method called do filter which takes a servlet request servlet response filter chain and of course, it can throw either an IO exception and or a servlet exception. Now, the few things we need to do are this. And I'm going to go try to go through these uh, each individual lines, right? We are actually going to take the HTTP servlet response that we get. And from the response, which is where we need to send the outgoing headers, that's what we have to do to allow this to work is we're going to set up a few headers. Now, one we're going to set up is access control allow origin. And we're going to specify to which origins we will allow this resource sharing to be involved. We're just going to do star because we're going to allow anybody to access it. Also, the allow methods. Which methods are we willing to share for cross resource? Now, there's a couple we can do. Post, put, get, options, and delete. Or we can just do star and say, we will share on any of the HTTP methods. <clears throat> now, we actually have another thing called allow of headers. Now, a couple things we can do here. Now, the access control allow headers says which cross-resource headers Am I allowing, now I'm saying star here because I'm willing to allow all headers, but there are specific ones. If you just want to have a specific ones like origin, X request with like the content type and accept, these are all of the headers that the client can send out if we only want to allow certain headers, right, to be coming in. So we're just going to stay asterisk as well, star. And a few other cleanup pieces will be for this. Um, the allow credentials is going to allow for the passing of client credentials into our resource sharing. So right now, we're just going to say false. We do not need to allow for credential sharing. And the access control max age of this sharing, because we don't really want to share forever, potentially. We want to have them revalidate this, and we're going to put this at 3,600 for now. Now, this creates a very simple course filter. Now, we could have a, a little more options if we want to fine-tune this or be more surgical, which we're not at this point. And yet the problem here is that we need to tell Spring that this filter exists and that we would want Spring to actually, or Spring Boot to actually execute this filter. So we're gonna to go to the demo application and all we need to do is create another bean. And let's look at this bean. The bean is going to be a filter registration bean and we're going to call this our core uh, filter registration. And all we need to do is create a new filter registration beam with a new cores filter, which we just created. Now, we are going to set for this registration beam the name cores filter. And we're also going to add the specific URL in which this filter will execute. We want this to execute for every request so that 
we know that these filters, this filter will get applied correctly. And we're going to say slash asterisk. And we need to set the order because we really want this one to execute first for our adding our specific headers. So we're going to set the order of one and just return this registration bean. Now, for doing that, by registering this, all we need to do is tell Spring Boot that, yes, I want you to register this new filter and this filter is going to work. And now when we go back to our page and we look at this, now remember, this is still our same page we had before, which is not in the same origin. And if we refresh this now, now you actually see a couple things. First of all, the value has been returned correctly. And the second piece is that if we look at the console, this actually worked correctly. We actually got a valid object back. It was successful. And the data that was sent back was hello world. And our headers were sent correctly. And now we will be able to view these pages, whether it's within our same page or not. Now, one last thing we can do uh, going to something like REST client, I'm going to put in localhost 8080. Now, it's not really going to show the page like you would expect. However, one thing it will show is the headers that get responded to. So if I hit send, and I want to scroll down to this course, it's just showing me the page. But here's what's interesting about it. If we scroll down here, and scroll this over, sorry, and we look at the response headers, that were sent, we now have these access control headers that have been sent along with the response. And these are our cross origin resource headers that have been sent for any of the requests that are coming from our Spring Boot application. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you like that, please subscribe to my channel and see all the latest videos that I have coming out. Thanks a lot.